part and parcel of the game that is. Um, of course, COVID and my injuries in France disrupted my my stay here. Uh, would have loved to play more and be part of, or part of it more, but enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, since being back with Leicester, it's been great. Um, I think it's been great for myself, and my, my, my family, and mentally it's just been really nice. We've really enjoyed the UK, so it's been great. And uh, unfortunately, that calf injury kept me out of the semi-finals in the, in the Prem, but uh, it was a great season last year, really enjoyed it. And then, yeah, again, ups and downs now the last few months with not being selected and coming back in and all of that, but that's all in the past. We're right here now. It's all looked up semi-final week, and we're excited. And Alan Walters is someone that you know very well from his time at the Springboks and from this season at Leicester. Obviously, he's now in England. What do you think he's got in store for them this week ahead of the match against the Springboks this weekend? Oh man, I love the top man. Uh, we all love him a lot, and I'm sure he's going to do great with England going going forward. And I'm sure he have some insights and I'll give a things, few things away, but uh, that that we expect. So, but I mean, there's not too much you can really give away. It's been quite a while. It's been four years, and uh, we've developed this squad a lot. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting weekend. And just finally from me, can I just ask you about Sia and, and him here as a captain and how important it is in modern day rugby for the captain to be sort of polite and diplomatic with the referees and how good Sia is at that and how, um, how sort of impressive his leadership is in that regard. Yeah, I think I mean, Sia has grown immensely over the years um, as a person, as a player and especially as a captain. Um, we, we've always been a good leadership group within the squad that always supported him, but he's, uh, he's really just stepped up to a new level and he's, uh, he's an unbelievable captain, he's inspirational, um, and it's all real. I think it's, I think it's fake. He's a, he's a friendly guy, he's an inspirational guy. It just comes naturally and that's why we follow him. Because there's nothing fake about it. He's an honest, true man and uh, it's a great guy to play for. Gentlemen uh, from Television New Zealand, um, obviously you playing in Moment. But Andre, what is it about South Africa that no matter what's happening on and off the field, uh, rugby wise or whatever, for this Springbok team when it comes to the Rugby World Cup is up the front? Man, it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just the way we brought up, we love it. Um, it's not always been easy for a lot of our guys in our squad growing up. So when we get to this position and get to this point, where there should be a lot of pressure on us. We, we, we refer back to it a lot. This is not really pressure, this is this is more privilege to be a part of these occasions. And um, so it sums up with South Africa mentality, do you think? I think so. I think it's uh, it's, it's something we grow up with. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I think I think our game model and the way we play the game suits World Cups pretty well, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's it's just we're comfortable in this in this environment, and um, we've been under pressure, or fulfilled, or growing up, whatever that may be. A lot of guys, and we all know the stories that's come from from the previous World Cup. Um, but it's something as a group, we just enjoy it. We really just enjoy the pressure. Um, we we always say it's a privilege to have this pressure on our shoulders, playing for our country, and uh, we just enjoy it. And I can ask you when you when the calf injury uh, and the team selection, how close was that? Was that uh, and how disappointed were you if you were disappointed um, at not making the initial selection? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, very disappointed. But um, no, it was a, it was a tight call. Um, it was a time sensitive thing. Uh, we pushed we pushed our hardest. We tried our best, but I was just a couple of weeks, probably just too late to show the to show the coaches that I was fit enough. So it was a very very disappointing time, of course, but. Um, yeah, everything worked out. Unfortunately for Malcolm, massive loss for us, but gave me an opportunity again to come back. So, yeah, well, it was close, but uh, just not in time. Andre, I'm sorry, from, from the Times. I just wonder as, as, if that may be both of you, but as players who work under a coaching team who, certainly in the last few months, have shown innovative ideas, maybe, maybe like the 7 1, or spotted unusual opportunities. On the field, whether it's uh, a charge down or, or calling a, a scrum from a mark, how do you react to those ideas when they're given to you as, as players? And what confidence does it give you that you, you have a coaching staff who are who, who are putting so much thought and time into the, that kind of detail that maybe other coaches don't have the time for because they're they're busy trying to build a, a team like like England have? I think the key thing you said there is uh, is the work they put in. Nothing that they do is just for, 
for, for no reason. It's all thought up, it's all meticulously planned, and they've earned our, like we trust them because they've earned, like we, they've earned our trust over the years from what they've done and how they prepare. So when they come up with these ideas, there's no questions asked. They give us a reason why we do whatever we do, and then we just back it, and we're all in, all in, and we all just trust each other, players to coaches and coaches to players, and it's just the trust that we have in each other. Sorry, can you just repeat that first question? Absolutely. Um, and of course, that's, that's the case. I mean, you can see on their faces four years ago the disappointment. Um, I've been part of a squad that's spat out in a, in a semi final in, in a World Cup. And it sits with you the rest of your life. There's a lot of things you look back and regret, and maybe thought you, that you could have done differently. And uh, I'm sure they'll come with that mindset um, this weekend. I think they'll be ruthless. I think they'll take their intensity and physicality to a whole new level. But that being said, we prepared for that. We're ready for that, and, and we enjoy that. That's always a part of the game that we love. You know, if there's going to be beef, it's going to be beef. It stays rugby. It's 80 minutes, and we've got to just go out and play the game. Oh yes, and the supporters. Um, I think it would be tough to ask the French to support us after the weekend, but I mean, it was an epic battle, one for the ages, and um, yeah, France was an unbelievable team. We've got the utmost respect for them uh, and their nation, so they can support to if they want, I guess, going forward, but it would be great if they could support us, yeah. Um, I'm going to play a um, First of all, just talk us through with you when you do your working partnership with the Mali as well. And how dynamic it's actually made um, the, the, the box look from first half to second half. And then, Kate, um, for you, how do you, how much, uh, how much inspiration do you take from such a black idiot playing performance from a guy like Jesse Green? No, so first, just, just I can't praise Marnie enough for the way he's been playing lately. He's been in unbelievable form, and he's he's taken on to the to the pressure that comes with playing for South Africa. He's, he's been handling that so well. Um, it's been really amazing to watch. I've known Marnie since he was very young, and uh, for me, the, the best thing about Marnie is he's not changed one bit since that young guy I met eight years ago. He's just a humble guy, works for the team, works extremely hard, and uh, I think he brings a beautiful, lovely, dynamic way of playing towards us as a team, and it's a lovely thing, and it's something we've all embraced and enjoyed as well. So um, whatever our roles are, myself or him, whenever we play, um, it's all towards the team, of course, and whatever we can do best, we, we'll, we'll try and do every weekend. Andre, uh, obviously a lot of different motivating factors going into the semi final. All Blacks look at Dane Cole, said yesterday he doesn't want to play in the third and fourth player because it's quite shit. Would you agree? Yep, it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a game you want to play in. Unfortunately, I've had to play in one of those before. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's terrible, but our minds are not going there at all. We're just focusing on Saturday and getting that one. That's what we're thinking about. Hi, Andre. And Spin was up in great loss, obviously, in history. But where did he do Brian Stephen? And uh, I'm sorry, since when is Brian Stephen? Oh, man, he's, he's, of course, right up there. Like you said, we've had some unbelievable arcs in the, in the past. Uh, got the privilege of playing with Bucky's and, uh, and Victor at their, towards the end of their careers. Um, but even it's special. He's, um, he's, he's such a big part of our squad. Yes, he's massive for us as a player, but I think what he does off the field sometimes people don't always realize. His leadership, his calmness. Um, he's actually a very, very chill guy. He wouldn't say that, but <laughs> um, very calm. And I think it rubs off on all of us, especially the younger guys as well. Seeing his calmness, it's, uh, it's something very important towards us. And um, yeah, his experience is, in, is invaluable and it's something we'll definitely have to draw on, uh, on this Saturday. Thank you very much. Thanks for